लास्ट फाइव सेकेंड्स यस रेडी स्टार्ट लार्ज पार्ट ऑफ द वर्क ऑफ ए मॉडर्न गवर्नमेंट हैज टू डू विद साइंस इट इज ओनली थ्रू साइंस दैट वी कैन ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू रियलिटी द होप्स वी हैव हेल्ड आउट टू अवर पीपल फॉर मैनी मोर ईयर्स टू कम द पीपल विल मेजर प्रोग्रेस इन टर्म्स ऑफ अवर एबिलिटी टू गिव दैम देयर बेसिक नीड्स द एग्रीकल्चरल साइंटिस्ट हैज ए स्पेशली वाइटल कंट्रीब्यूशन टू मेक टू अवर प्लान ऑफ इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट फॉर ईयर्स द गवर्नमेंट हैज बीन परसुएडिंग फार्मर्स टू अडॉप्ट न्यू फार्मिंग प्रैक्टिस इट इज ओनली इन द लास्ट थ्री और फोर ईयर्स दैट द रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ विलेजर्स हैज ओवरटेकन द ऑफिशियल एफर्ट द फार्मर्स हैव शेड देयर सेप्टिसिजम ऑफ सिटी पीपल एंड देयर न्यू आइडियाज वट हैज convinced them in what they have witnessed with their own eyes everywhere farmers tend to be conservative and slow to change but once they change they are not content to be indifferent converts the discovery of a new seed variety stirs rural people as much as a space walk or a transplanted heart does the more liberate classes farmers today walk miles to buy seed the great problem for the government is to find sufficient seed and fertilizer to meet their demand what a change from the days when we could not get them to hear us or look at what we had to offer rural india has shed its apathy agricultural scientists can rightfully claim their share of the credit for bringing about this transformation but they cannot rest there the solution of one problem gives rise to many new problems new varieties are being extended to vast areas because of the demand from farmers and our own race towards self sufficiency this work is being done far too fast and with only a minimum of protesting modern farming is a combination of many techniques and materials it is not possible to adopt any one in isolation disregarding the others the scientist has a special responsibility to provide answers to the problems which are consequences of his own work the greatest task before the agricultural scientists and before the government in general is to ensure that there is no setback in the new program if for example widespread plant disease attacks the new varieties the farmers hard won trust in modern practices will be shaken and he might retreat into his shell of traditionalism the average farmer does not have money to waste nor can he afford undue risk he will not experiment on his own unless he is certain that the experiments have succeeded elsewhere it is because our demonstration programs have been convincing that the cultivators have come forward in such large numbers today to use new varieties of seed and fertilizers it is not the big farmers alone who has ventured forth the small farmers enthusiasm is even greater to him even a little improvement goes a long way in the new agricultural program he sees the opportunity to fulfill his numerous small needs which have so long been neglected it is obvious that farmers will pay heed to the call for national self sufficiency not only to the extent that the programs makes a difference to their lives how can we expect them to grow more for the nation if their additional efforts do not bring adequate reward to their own families we talk of inputs but in scientific agriculture and uh, the most important input of all is the human input modern farming is a far cry from spreading the seed and leaving the rest to the sun rain and stars the farmers has now to fight constantly with nature repairing its shortcomings exploiting its advantages and forcing the pace this calls for greater knowledge and training on the farmers part in turn the administrative agency has to so devise farm information that even the nominally literate farmer can understand and utilize it advancement will not endure if it is isolated additional effort in any one field must be matched by similar efforts in others water seed fertilizers pesticides tools credit marketing 
एंड एजुकेशन ऑल फॉर्म पार्ट ऑफ द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ चेंज एग्रीकल्चरल साइंटिस्ट बाई होम आई मीन नॉट ओनली बॉटनिस्ट बट ऑल्सो एग्रीकल्चरल इंजीनियर्स एंड इकोनॉमिस्ट हैव मच टू कंट्रीब्यूट टू दिस कोर्डिनेटेड एजेंडा ऑफ प्रोग्रेस देर हैज बीन कंसिडरेबल डिबेट ऑन द क्वेश्चन वेदर रिसर्च इन इंडिया शुड स्पेंड टाइम फाइंडिंग आउट ए न्यू वट हैज बीन फाउंड एल्सवेयर अर्लियर वाइल देयर माइड बी नीड एंड जस्टिफिकेशन फॉर बाइंग इंडस्ट्रियल नो हाउ फ्रॉम एब्रॉड वी कैन नॉट हैंड ओवर अवर एग्रीकल्चरल प्रॉब्लम्स टू अदर्स ए लेथ मे बी बॉडिली ब्रॉड हेयर फ्रॉम यूरोप और अमेरिका एंड इट विल टर्न आउट पार्ट ऑफ द सेम शेप एंड स्पेसिफिकेशन बट ए प्लांट फ्रॉम एल्सवेयर इज अनलाइकली टू ग्रो द सेम वे इन अवर सॉइल एवरी टाइम ए प्लांट इज इंट्रोड्यूस द साइंटिस्ट हैज टू डू कंसिडरेबल अडेप्टर वर्क ही हैज नॉट ओनली टू टेस्ट इट्स सुटेबिलिटी टू अवर सॉइल एंड क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशंस बट ऑल्सो टू फाइंड आउट हाउ फार इट इज सबल टू पेस Mr President when i received your invitation to inaugurate this the 39th annual session of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry i was somewhat hesitant in accepting it i was aware that since independence each annual session of the federation has been inaugurated by the prime minister this in fact was the main reason for my reluctance these annual meetings are beginning to become almost a ritual and i am not much of a believer in rituals i am not happy about the tendency to turn the prime minister to inaugurate every function of importance and to consider that a function which is not inaugurated by the prime minister is only of second rate importance i feel strongly that other cabinet ministers as be also people in public life outside officialdom should perform such functions far more frequently than they are at present doing your experience will always be useful within the ranks of industry the younger group feels that it is not fully playing its part i have often spoken of my intention to keep in together some younger generations i am calling together some younger industrialist technicians and managers from both private and public sectors to discuss concrete and specific problems within the broad framework of our basic objectives i will be a sharing of thought and perhaps evolving of new ideas dynamic changes are needed now in attitudes and functions in your address mr president you have pointed out that india is still a depressingly poor country and expressed concern that we have not succeeded well enough in our efforts to reduce poverty and develop our economy poverty is indeed the central problem facing us and it is the way in which we set out to tackle it that we as a nation will be judged it is a long and arduous battle that we have to wage it calls for electricity for it calls for clarity of purpose for determination the discipline the hard work of which we are capable slowly and steadily we shall be building a new and progressive nation in which even the poorest in our country will be able to enjoy a minimum level of living there will be fuller employment more widespread facilities of education and health greater opportunities for youth and less inequalities of income and wealth after you had shown so clear a recognition of the challenge of our situation i was a little disappointed mr president to hear you suggest that we would be a well advised to have a smaller eighth plan after a detailed analysis of all the relevant considerations and a recognition of the limits of the possibilities open to us one may come to any conclusion about the size but to suggest and propagate that a smaller plan is desirable for its own sale and that it may even help in our fight against poverty is not convincing there is no question in my mind that we have to mobilize our resources to the limit of our capacity and use these human and material resources in a coordinated and efficient manner if we shirk the responsibility and seek to cover it up by phrases we shall be merely paying lip service 
to the cause of the common man it is not with caution and circumspection that we can win the war against poverty but by our capacity to take risks and to accept burdens and responsibilities this does not mean that we should not take the greatest possible care in the husbanding of our resources i am anxious to seek advice on the methods by which we could achieve a higher rate of growth in our economy and ensure better performance in every sector of our activity with lower investment or input of resources in general i do not deny that our performance in the recent past has fallen short of our exceptions we could have done better in many directions however let us not belittle our achievements there is much in our record of the last 3 plans of which we can legitimately be proud let us not forget that the current level of industrial production is nearly twice of what it was in 1955 and we produce a large range of commodities which we did not produce before the output of food grains increased by 70% between 1990 91 and 1994 95 let us not ignore the great progress in education especially primary education and technical education new skills have been developed science and technology are making their presence felt in distant villages much of the frustration which exists in the indian economy today and which you have voiced flows from the face that the performance of the third plan has fallen short of our hopes let us by all means learn from our mistakes and attempt to correct them to best of our abilities and resources stop